Have you ever known those who seem to continue to have the energy, the enthusiasm uh, in their life, their work or ministry, despite facing tough challenges? How is that possible? How can we continually keep ourselves fresh, vibrant and passionate to keep moving forward as leaders? And one of the keys is to understand the principle of rhythm for refreshing, a biblical pattern that God implemented in the Old Testament in particular. This is my leadership podcast for wilsonlyling.com. We produce podcasts for leadership, intercession, and prophetic in order to help equip people in different areas of ministries. Well, today, I will be sharing about the value of rhythms of refreshing. In the Old Testament, we notice that God commanded and implemented the weekly Sabbaths. We have also the for the land, year-long Sabbaths, and special Sabbaths for uh, the seven annual festivals. And a biblical and detailed examination of this and its implications we produce in my blog article, which I call Rhythms of Refreshing the Biblical Basis. In there, we explain that in the New Testament, the principle of Sabbath is ultimately intended to point to the spiritual rest that is to be found only in Christ. Yet, there's also practical implications. There's a practical side to this. You see, when we look at Jesus, he explained in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, the Sabbath was made for men, not men for the Sabbath. So in other words, Sabbath was intended to benefit men. And God created those rhythms into the very life of the Israelites for their benefit. And we concluded there that rhythms will benefit us in a number of ways. Firstly, it is about creating healthy rhythms, beneficial rhythms. And this is seen in the regular weekly, biannual, and longer-term rhythms for the benefit of the Israelites. Secondly, these rhythms are intended to keep us and help us in wholesome ways, such as spiritually, physically, communally. And thirdly, these are acts that help reinforce our devotion and trust in God because it requires us to stop certain activities that we may very much desire to be involved in, instead to replace it with activities that God deems to be important. So, why are such rhythms important to leaders? Well, you see, as leaders, we often can get too busy. We may neglect healthy rhythms that, that will help us to continue to be refreshed, revitalized, and even realigned with God. And so it is by recognizing and wisely incorporating these healthy rhythms that leaders can begin to set the foundations for sustainability and even growth. Further, when we appreciate such rhythms, leaders could also implement it for the benefit of their organization. So let's look right now at some rhythms that can work for us, for you. The key to effective rhythms is, is that it must be appropriate to help you specifically. Could you design a rhythm that sustains you spiritually, emotionally, and physically throughout the week and every other week? And so to help us identify this, we should consider what is it? What are those key things that help to release our stress, to refresh us, to recalibrate and realign? And this I call the four R's. Let's look firstly at what can help us relieve stress effectively. Now, there are many tips that are available on how to relieve stress, even in just the internet. The practice of self-care, of course, is a fundamental part of all of this. However, we should ask ourselves as leaders, who are often very time poor, what relaxes us efficiently and effectively? And also, is it in a healthy way? 
because it's, it's so important to conceal this carefully for there are ways to relieve stress but they are neither healthy nor sustainable in the long term. Now it is commonly known that physical exercise, especially aerobic exercises, it allows the toxins that's built up in our bodies to be flushed out. It also releases endorphins, that's the brain chemicals that help us to feel better. Studies have found that it helps reduce tension, improve the mood, improve sleep, self-esteem, and so forth. It is a natural and all-round healthy way to de-stress, and thus highly recommended. Better still, if it allows multitasking to occur. Now, some people may listen to podcasts and other things while they're walking, jogging, or, or running. Now, I usually exercise on a cross trainer. And usually I would listen to podcasts, perhaps to news, uh, uh, or even watch some videos. And I also do gardening for exercise. It, it brings me out to the fresh air. And in addition, I gain the benefit of uh, organic fruits and vegetables as well. Now, stress can also be relieved with social activities, like spending time with family and friends having a good laugh and enjoying oneself. So when it's done in the right way, it can achieve both stress relief and strengthen your relationships. There are many other ways, and I won't list them here because you can find them elsewhere. But a key leadership question we should always ask ourselves is this, is it going to be effective in our own specific context? Often the problem is we fall back into a pattern of trying to relieve stress based on what is familiar, based on habit, even though it may not be effective. And that is a cycle we should break and change and replace with better ways. Another question is what helps us to refresh effectively? Now, to relieve stress is to remove the stress. To refresh is to regain the enthusiasm and energy. Now, many of the approaches used to de-stress can also help us regain energy, but not always. And it's so important that we know what the difference is. For example, playing computer games may relieve stress, but really it does very little to refresh. The additional problem with such an approach is that it can become addictive which is why I totally avoid this. I remove all those temptations from my laptop and my smartphone. So let us identify to help us better understand what can help us feel refreshed. What can help us feel energized? Well, firstly, when our frame of mind is positive, when it's possibility oriented, consider the approach of watching television, movies and, and other medias. It may relieve stress, but not always refresh. However, if we, what we watch is uplifting, it's inspiring, it makes us laugh, it's educational, then it could refresh because of the positivity that it fosters in our mind. Now, sometimes I may watch some uh, America Got Talent sort of highlights. But why? Because it's inspiring. I love to see the fact that nobody's come in and, and they demonstrate some inherent talent or, or, or which they have disciplined themselves to discover and so forth. And it's inspiring to look at people whom you might at first think, I don't know what I can expect from them at all. And they surprise you in amazing ways. And another thing that, that really helps me is I, I like to watch how film or movies are made behind the scene. It refreshes me because it reveals the creative process that people go through. And I find that really fascinating. It, it stirs and stimulates my creative side. Also, as I watch how people go through their own process, it also helps me understand how creative people function. Now, each person is unique and it's so helpful for us to make that journey of discovery to find out what actually can refresh us personally in our own context 
and to discover what is effective. The second aspect about that is when our emotional tank is being refilled. This can occur when our hearts are warm through affirmation, encouragement, love, and, and so forth. Even just observing those such heartwarming incidents and gestures can help us as well. This is why when we're in a supportive environment, it's, it's such a thank filler for us. And so it is crucial that we do uh, have some supportive people that can help refill our emotional tank. That's so important. And third aspect to that is that when we feel physically healthy and have sufficient energy to do what we need to do. You see, the lack of physical energy can really drain us. It can drain us in all the other areas, which is why it is crucial to maintain a healthy lifestyle, including uh, maintaining a healthy diet, in order that we may have sufficient energy levels. And the last area is that when we are spiritually vibrant. You see, our spiritual condition may be less felt if we are spiritually dull. Yet, at the same time, our spiritual condition can affect and impact all other aspects of our mental, emotional, and even the physical. So spiritual vibrancy, it comes about when we build our spirit through healthy spiritual disciplines. So it is very helpful for us to identify which aspects of these spiritual disciplines help us the most to revive our spirit, especially when it feels depleted. In my case, I find that praying in tongues, and especially when I worship and enter into God's presence, that brings the most immediate impact for myself. So you need to discover what works best for your situation. Another question we have to ask ourselves is, what helps us to recalibrate and realign effectively? Now, you've got to understand this. To recalibrate is about restoring balance. Now, as a former scientist, I am very familiar with recalibrating all the instruments that I use. At regular intervals, I, I would check because I have to be certain that all my, my instruments are still accurate. They're still measuring the things properly. And because after a certain amount of use or because of changes in the environment, it throws the instruments off eventually. And similarly, it is so easy to get off balance when we are facing different pressures, maybe when a crisis occurs, uh, may, perhaps other people's priorities may be pushing us in a different direction, uh, or even when we get just excited about something else, it could throw us off the balance that we have. On the other hand, to realign, it's all about getting our focus and direction correct. You see, when you bring your car in for your, the wheels to be checked, they always do two things. They balance your wheels and they align your front pair of tires. And so balance will ensure that equal wear will happen for all your four tires. And that will enable a longer lasting tire. Alignment is about the correct direction that these tires will roll. And this is very critical when you brake hard because if the alignment is off, you could skid in a different direction as you brake. Now, we do need regular times to recalibrate and realign. But what should we recalibrate and realign against? It should be God and His Word because God and His Word are the absolute standard for us all. And how do we do this? The best way to do this is through times of prayer communion with God, reading God's Word, hearing God's Word, perhaps when it's being taught or preached, and so forth. Now, we understand something about the need to relieve stress, to rebalance, to uh, realign, recalibrate, and, and so that is important. Let me now talk about, to help us understand the breath, about depth and intensity. You see, let me illustrate this way. When we plant a tree, we need to appreciate its root system. The breadth of its roots, the depth that it goes, and how vigorously the roots spread. And in a way, 
The same occurs with the challenges, the stresses that we face. It can impact us in a very similar way to the root system of a tree. Let me try to elaborate this a little bit more. You see, some stresses can be very localized in its impact upon our hearts. Let me explain with, with what happened for uh, my tooth. Recently, I had to extract one of my lower molar teeth. Now, in itself, the extraction was, was not difficult. The dentist could do it. It wasn't, it wasn't particularly painful. So that was all right. It was localized. But the problem was it, there is a broader impact. You see, many years prior to that, I had already lost the other lower molar tooth on the left. So now I have no lower molar, and because my wisdom tooth is not really uh, operative, so I have nothing, no teeth in my lower molar, and therefore it's very difficult for me to chew anything on it. But it gets worse. You see, in the years that I did not have those lower molar, my upper tooth overextended. It has grown down. And because of that, I cannot replace I, I'm planning to put in dental implants and I cannot replace the lost tooth with the dental implant because there's not enough space. So now I have to do orthodontics on it and the braces I had to wear to push the upper teeth back into the right position. So that's a lot of work. And not only that, the, the intense situation is this. It's going to cost me a lot more. Not only do I need the dental implants, I need to do orthodontics on it at the same time. Fortunately, I don't have a depth problem. I mean, imagine if my lower molar had very deep roots and if my jaw uh, did not have enough bone structure in it, then the, in order for the dentist to install the dental implants, he would have to infill with artificial bone. That would be a lot more work to be done. So, the issues we are confronted with. It can have breath where its impact may impact upon other connected areas in our lives. It can have a depth aspect where it may go deeper into our psyche. It may be much more deep-seated where it could be much more entrenched in our souls. Or it could be a shallow or superficial issue in our heart. It could have an intensity in terms of the rate of its impacts, progression, and uh, growing, you know, sort of impact upon our lives and so forth. And so, in order to address the above, the aspect of relieving the stress, to refresh, to recalibrate, and realign, we also have to consider the appropriateness of the measures in order that it may reach the appropriate breath and depth and, and intensity as well to deal with the problems that we are facing. In other words, appropriate measures has to be taken. Just, just like the dentist, he would not be just happily cleaning the plaque on my teeth when one of my teeth is decaying. He will have to take appropriate measures to deal with the bigger issues. We need similar measures for our lives. Rhythms can facilitate much of the above by enabling maintenance and strengthening in order that we may have a more sustainable, uh, in, be more sustainable in our life and ministry. And so appropriate measures are needed at the appropriate rhythms. And now rhythms will not solve everything because there will be times of traumatic crisis, there may be deep-seated issues that require much deeper spiritual, psychological surgeries. So let, let me give you some examples now to help you understand how some of this may be applied. For example, having daily devotions and prayer can help us to distress, refresh, even recalibrate, but at a shallow level since the amount of time and the intensity involved is very limited. At the Sunday celebration worship, there's a greater opportunity to go deeper. Similarly, with small groups, times of discussion and so forth, we can probably go deeper as well, although probably a slightly different nuance than what we would experience on a Sunday worship uh, service. By attending conferences, we could go even deeper 
in more in the more intense spiritual atmosphere and the teaching of God's word. So you can begin to see there's a, a intensity thing that can vary because of the of the type of situation experience we're having and we can understand the, necess the necessary rhythms we can utilize for that. However, can I say this? The key, the key to all of this, which will make all the difference, is how well are we taking advantage of it? Because it will impact on how much we get out of it, whether it be our devotional time, whether it be on a Sunday worship, whether it be in a small group situation. When we are intentional, we can make the most of it. But if we are distracted, we will get very little out of it. Thus, we have to learn how to draw it in, how to suck in of every spiritual element. Imagine like having a hot shower. You can, you can stand under a hot shower and really let your bodies enjoy the hot shower. Or you can just get into the business of quickly taking a bath, a shower, and moving out. You don't get much out of it. So, let me give you some examples from my personal rhythms that I found so helpful in my own life. So, in the area of relieving stress and refreshing, every day, I am conscious of my mental and emotional well-being. My, my leadership responsibilities can, can lead to some significant stress at times. And so, should the stress build up, I can sense that emotional strain building up. I, I can sense what it's like when I'm beginning to feel overwhelmed and, and so forth. And when that happens, I very quickly take steps the very same day. For I intentionally do my best not to allow stress to build up day after day so that I can quickly deal with it immediately rather than let it build up all the time. So, my most effective and time-proven remedy is simply to worship until I enter God's presence and also pray in tongues, as I mentioned earlier. And I have found that when I do that, when I come to God's presence, the presence of God begins to lift the burden from my shoulder and help me to refocus on Him much more than the problem itself. And it doesn't take me long to do this, usually less than 10 minutes. In other words, I have an almost daily rhythm of self-reflection and remedy for stress and to refresh. This self-reflection also occurs very quickly because I had not accumulated a lot of emotional baggage that I need to unpack to get to the core of the problem. Imagine it's like if you clean your house and tidy your house every day. There's not much dirt or dust that's accumulated, so it's very quick to keep it up to standard. On top of this, just about every other day, I have some form of exercise, whether it be in my little home gym or doing gunning, as I had mentioned earlier. Another area is the area of recalibrating and realigning through God's Word. As a pastor and preacher, I regularly prepare sermons and teaching almost every week. I have noticed there are many preachers who prepare the sermons only for their congregation. And so it can feel like burdensome work sometimes because it's constantly giving out. Instead, I approach it also for my own spiritual nourishment, recalibration and realignment. I allow God's Word to impact me as I am preparing, to challenge, convict, inspire me at the same time. So to allow this, I do delve deeper into the areas which I believe is of personal benefit. That, well, that would mean I deviate, I divert slightly from my preparations. But I do this to feed myself. In other words, I have inbuilt an almost weekly rhythm of recalibrating and realignment to God's Word. Of course, on top of this, I aim to also take spiritual retreats once or twice a year to seek God in order to make deeper recalibrations and realignments. Let me now share something about some practical implementations of rhythms of refreshing. Can I suggest it is advisable? to map out our rhythms, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, or annually. Now, the most crucial to this would be your daily 
and weekly. If you can get those going well, then the rest will tend to fall into place. Let me give you some recommendations now. Firstly, just a regular short time of devotion to God, preferably daily, and where we may worship God, we commune with Him in prayer. This also provides a regular opportunity to refresh our hearts. And a second one is a regular time for self-reflection and self-adjustment, where we contemplate the state of our own heart. And we also, at that time, take the opportunity to learn to develop in self-awareness with the help of the Holy Spirit. It does provide us an opportunity to relieve stress, to refresh, or even to recalibrate. The third one I would suggest is a time for God's Word. And this can be fulfilled by attending church worship services and listening to sermons, uh, getting involved in small groups, whether it be weekly or so forth. You could augment this with Sunday school or other Christian educational avenues. And now this will help us continually and incrementally recalibrate and realign to God's Word. I would also suggest a, a fourth one is a time set aside to do God's work. This is where we intentionally set ourselves aside from our normal work, which may be outside. And this could involve, for example, serving in a church ministry on, on some regular basis. Uh, another thing you could do is put time aside for some spiritual retreats. A time that you just say, I'm, I'm not going to get involved in other things. I want to seek God. I want to realign spiritually. I want to uh, perhaps put that time aside so I can attain some spiritual conferences. So this is the sort of thing you might do uh, once or twice a year, or maybe three times a year. It's, it's only for a few times a year for a much deeper encounter with God. You should also consider a time out from our work where you can use that time to have physical rest and exercise, to have healthy recreation, that really can help relieve stress and refresh us. You could do this perhaps weekly or monthly. It's good to also have a time for family because it's important that as leaders, we do not neglect our families. We should set regular time aside to continue to build and strengthen our family relations and uh, to allow bonding to occur. We should also have some time for community. And so when we're involved in the church services, don't just rush in and rush out. Have time to build relationships in the community. Get involved in small groups because that's where you really build up that sense of connection in community. And that will help you be part of a supportive and a positive community. That will also contribute towards your well-being. So let me conclude by saying there is great value in developing appropriate rhythms that enable us to relieve our stress, to refresh, to recalibrate, and to realign. And this is particularly important for leaders because we do tend to face higher levels of stress and buffeting that could throw us off course. So by wisely creating effective rhythms, we can have a more sustainable and successful life and ministry. So may God bless you.